Here's how I 3D kitbashed a Dredge Marine Icon Bearer. I've been printing and painting a Death Guard kill team using Mezgeik's Dredge models. I've got pretty much all I need made except for an Icon Bearer. I'll use the official Icon Bearer's pose as inspiration while using his modular Dredge Marine Warrior's Kit. Make sure to use the link in the description to check out Mezgeik's models. If you don't have a 3D printer, OnlyGames.co sells physical versions of Mezgeik's stuff. You can use the code IPAINTSMALLTHINGS15 for 15% off. The first step was to assemble <coughs> the first step was to assemble the marine in Blender. This way I can test different parts without having to print anything out. Thankfully, Mezgeik's models are very easy to work with in Blender. You can simply go into edit mode, select all with A, press P, and then separate by loose parts. This way you can remove what you want and make room for new things. In this case, we can make a cool icon using pieces taken from this mace. I took just the mine, scaled it way up, and moved it on top of a pole I made by using some simple cylinders. After separating by loose parts, I like to join certain things back together for ease of movement. To do that, select all the objects you want to group, right click, and select join. You can always separate by loose parts again if you need to edit a certain part of the group. To make the classic Nurgle icon, I took the mine with the chain attached and moved that into place. Then I made a copy of it and flipped it by making the X scale negative. From there, it was just a lot of fine tuning the position and scale of everything. I also took a skull on a spike from a backpack and clipped it onto the top. I played around with the idea of adding two more spikes to mimic another classic Nurgle icon, but I thought it was a little bit too busy, so I decided to go without it. Although looking back now, it doesn't look too bad. I finalized the pose and what parts I needed and printed everything out. Gluing everything together went relatively smoothly. Although I did need to cut off the guides on the arms and fill gaps with texture paste since I angled them in Blender and they no longer lined up with the pose I wanted. With the kit bash done, it was time to paint. This paint job is actually surprisingly easy, especially if you have an airbrush. After zenithal highlighting, Spray randomly with purple, aqua, and teal, or randomly paint them on. Really, any underwater looking colors will do. I've been really enjoying Huge Miniature's new airbrush paints. I think technically, this meets the three colors rule for tournaments. Next, I went around and made markings on the armor. I sort of was going for tribal markings and stripes. This is great practice for freehanding. Then, I took some burnt umber on a sponge and dabbed her on the mini to create chips in the armor. I followed that by sponging and dabbing over the same areas, but now with huge minis blue skies to add a sense of depth to the chips. Finally, I went in with a brush to make scratches and to do extra manual chipping. I painted the exposed parts of the wires, the webbing on the joints, and the icon pole with black. Then. I painted all the trim with metal color copper and whatever needed to be steel with steel. This was the most time consuming part. I painted the gun casing with French Mirage Blue. Next, I painted all the barnacles, wraps, and skulls with white and went over the wraps with Skeleton Horde contrast paint. 
To paint the wires in kelp, I first stippled and highlighted with white, then glazed on huge minis sapling green, then highlighted them further with tree frog green. Then I painted all the coral on the body with a base coat of monarch magenta and highlighted with salmon red. With all the base coating done, it's time for the washes and weathering effects. We're on the home stretch now. Yay! I washed all the barnacles and skulls with Agrax Earth Shade, the coral with Reichland Flesh Shade, and Daruki Violet on the armor. I try not to do an all overwash with this, just where the edges were to create better separation and high detail areas like the hands and face. Lastly, I used Null Oil on the metal bits. Once all that was dry, I highlighted the skull with white. Now, it's time to weather the poop out of this guy. If you've been watching the channel lately, you'll know how much of a fan of Dirty Down weathering effects I've become. And thanks to Goblins at the Goblin Hut for sending me some moss effect to test out. Just a note on using this stuff for the first time, make sure you shake them extremely well. You should be able to hear the little agitator going crazy in there. Also, if you hold it up to a light, there shouldn't be any goopiness at the bottom when you've shaken it well enough. Make sure to use a brush you don't mind ruining for this. I started with the moss and applied it all over the wires and kelp. I didn't worry about being precise. Any spillover looks like algae anyway. Also, you can feather out the edges using a little water and a damp brush. Next, I applied a thin layer of verdigris over all the copper. I applied a few layers to intensify the effect in certain places. Then I added rust effect to the metal and various spots on the armor. I highlighted the metal with a bright silver. Lastly, I added the icon bear to his base, and he was done. I'm really loving painting these guys, and if you want to check out Mezgeik's models, make sure to use the links in the description, and use code IPAINTSMALLTHINGS15 if you decide to buy physical models from OnlyGames.co for 15% off. Also, make sure to stop by the Goblin's Hut if you want to try out Dirty Down weathering effects. If you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe. If you want to help support the channel a bit, consider checking out my Buy Me A Coffee and get your name on a wall in graffiti. Leave a comment with any feedback or suggestions. Alright, bye bye